Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to understand about the HTTP protocol and the response codes that will be really helpful when learning the overall API automation or API testing. So what exactly is HTTP? So if you go to the documentation here, so let me go back to this Mozilla developer.mozilla.com here and you will see that we have a little bit description about the HTTP. So you can go ahead and read out uh, or if you want to read a little bit more detail about HTTP, you can go ahead and refer to this particular link. But HTTP is a protocol. So I'll explain all the basics that are required for HTTP for you to understand about the API testing and to answer any of the API testing interview questions. So HTTP is the protocol for communicating between the client and server, right? So it's for fetching the resources or posting the resources and we'll understand about the methods, right? So we have understood about the get method. There are different methods like post and etc. So we'll understand all of that as well. But in general, HTTP is a protocol for communicating between client and server, okay? So it is the foundation of any data exchange on the web and is a client server protocol. So say for example, you are accessing any of the website or any of the app on your mobile. What happens is you have the UI interface, right? So graphical user interface is available to you and you access it, right? So say for example, you are buying something from amazon.com and you have opened that amazon.com website on your desktop or laptop. So what is that interface? That's graphical user interface. And when you say add items to cart or register yourself, what happens in the background is, is the requests are being sent over the network. And what is the protocol that helps us to achieve this communication it's http over the internet so there is a the internet is the connection or basically it's a network uh, over which the communication will happen so there are server and now how a server say for example in my home i have a machine wherein i have some resources okay and you are sitting there somewhere in united states or some other country how are you going to access the data that i have stored here so if say for example in my server i make that data public and you have the internet connectivity and then I also make a endpoint that yes this is the endpoint that you can use to access the data that I have stored here and that endpoint is basically you can say it could, could be an API right it's a, it's a interface for you sitting somewhere else to access that endpoint and access whatever data I have shared so that how that communication will happen so you might be opening the browser okay or any other client say for example app or anything then over the network over the internet you can send that request and the protocol that will be sup supporting this whole communication is from client and server is http okay so if you see here that you have this web document or mobile application if you want to get some website or access any of the website right so over the internet you just say get or when you access any of the website when i say i have typed in http um, developer.mozilla.org it's basically i'm fetching the resources right so fetching this particular page and this is the resource path right so this is the path that where this particular article is about the http so uh, i just provided this address and hit enter and this page got displayed to me right so this is a get request i'm fetching it from where from the mozilla dot uh, org web server over the internet right so this is what basically a brief overview of http is now http and overall network and protocols it's pretty complex but for api testing this is good enough for getting started okay so this is about http now the next thing is understanding so if you you can go through this particular document very easy to understand but do not go into too much detail up front once you complete this course then you can go ahead and dig more deeper now what are the response codes right so http response codes are the codes that will help you to indicate or basically identify whether the request has been successful or if there has been error then what error that particular code signifies so previously if we see here we have got this 200 okay right so this is the response http response code and this signifies that the request has been successful right so there is a successful response so anything between 200 to 299 is a successful response and then there is a 
defined standard so if you go to the 200 right so 200 okay is the request has been succeeded okay and then 201 is created accepted so we'll understand some of these in detail when we go to the test section of the api testing but 200 okay is the most common one when you do the api or send any get request if you get a successful response then you will get a 200 okay message now what other response code status codes are there so 100 to 199 is only for information informational purpose then anything any code that you get in the api say for example here in api testing you got 300 or something right 300 to 399 that means it's a redirection redirection message if there is a request and then that request redirects or there is a re redirection to some other location then the message will be 300 to 399 something in between that any client error will be represented by 400 to 499 and server error are represented by 500 to 599 now understanding or just memorizing these is good enough because 100 200 300 400 500 will give you a very fair bit of idea yes if, if it is 400 it is a client related error if it is 500 it is something with the server okay or the gateway so you know that if there is an error something between 500 to 599 you where you need to go ahead and look into if it is something between 400 to 499 you need to look at the client and what is the client client is your postman client right and i'll cover uh, about this client and then the client could be your uh, browser itself okay so now you know that these response codes are important because you will be working day in day out with these response codes in api testing so just briefly understand these top level or high level in detail say for example what exactly 100 means what what 101 means you can get it over the internet and then eventually you will be able to recognize when you get any of these messages okay so now what exactly the postman client is all about right so if we talk about this right so here we have understood about the http right so http protocol we have understood that it's a communication protocol from the client to the server now we know that this request that we have posted okay this is to get the status of the postman okay postman echo right so there is a postman server um, from where this request is being sent and we get a response that whether this server is up and running so if we simply click on send you will see that, that there is a 200 okay response and then in the body we have got the response uh, with with certain details right so what protocol is being used it's a http protocol right so you will see http so at the moment it is not specifically typed in but even if i type in so if you if it is not typed in by default the protocol will default to even if you do like this because http is a communication protocol between the client and postman is my client and it's communicating to the server which is which has the resource or the locator as postman echo.com now when you when you hit this particular resource or uh, this particular host and then this is the resource get then it will send the response back which is what it is sending so if http was not specified right so in the previous case http was not specified still it will default or it will be a http protocol from this client the request is being sent to the server if i specify http you will see the response is not going to change because by default is it is using http now the other option is https which is nothing but a secure version of http now with http your message won't be secure it can be easily intercepted over the network right so that's how hackers basically get into the messages that are being sent from your client to the server right so because with the s it is more of encrypted so secure version of http and if the server is not supporting the http secure version which in this case it is so you can see that it has also succeeded with the https and with http uh, hypertext transfer protocol we have got the response okay so now if say for example now this is the postman client so usually wh why do we need postman client when we can test everything from the ui okay so if i talk about say for example here okay so let's quickly go back and so in the postman here we have sent the request okay and we have got some response we have got the status code and headers now your browser is also a client 
right so if i simply go ahead here and post this here in the search and then hit enter you will see i'm getting the response here as well right it is sending it is returning the response with all the details okay so if i simply right click and inspect and let's see what exactly are the details so if you simply go to the network let me zoom out a little bit zoom in and go to the network so here if i again get right so you will see that it is a get call right so this is a get method and then status is 200 which is again what was returned in this postman as well and then if i simply click here you will see all of the details that we have seen in the postman we will be able to see here in the response as well right so the response has returned okay the headers whatever the headers the status code code the response headers are being returned okay and the request header whichever headers were sent now this browser is also kind of client and when you hit the hostname and the endpoint or the resource in the browser you will get something similar response that you are getting here in the postman app okay so what is the relevance of this app and why you would need it in your application so say for example your application will have a say for example it's a mobile app or a website right so uh, if it is a mobile app okay or a website all right so it will have a user interface okay now you will basically if if it is a website you will open the browser right and then put the website address and then try to access it for example amazon.com and then there will be a server okay so there will be a server wherein if you say for example hit the or try to access this particular website it will hit or hit this particular server and then server will respond with whatever resource or the information that you are requesting okay if it is a website it will return the the page displayed here okay now most of the time when your development activities start the ui is not ready up front right you it's it's not possible to get everything built all at once uh, things are built incrementally and especially with the agile and scrum things are built incrementally so and in this particular case when the ui is not ready and then say for example there are different services to cater for say for example to register a user okay there will be a different web service registration okay so the registration web service that will be developed and then will be the endpoint will be exposed so in order to test say for example the registration web service is developed and it's available login web service is developed and it is available but the ui has not been built yet so what will you do in order to test those individually you need to test those you need to also make sure that the relevant request uh, attributes are being passed response contains the relevant attributes if there are mand mandatory attributes they are being returned so how you are going to test it so postman client or postman comes in picture here okay postman or a soap ui right so there are many tools that will help you to basically test the api so you can simply what you are doing is that that, that endpoint what the registration endpoints for example you are going to put here okay and then provide all the request details for example in the registration you will provide the username the password right confirm the password email etc and then send that request and then with all that request this registration should get be it should be successful and you should get a response here so that that testing you are doing upfront before waiting for the ui to be ready okay and you are also individually testing those web services so that you can ensure that these services are working as expected okay so that's where postman comes in picture apologies for my drawing basically it's very unclear i understand that um, but just to give you a context this is what you will you will be using postman for okay so we will be say for example there is a development activity going on they have provided us the registration uh, host name and the endpoint and then it will be say for example a post call right so we are registering we are we are sending something okay so we'll simply change it to the post will here will provide the 
the data whatever is required right so we can um, uh, select whatever format the values need to be sent okay whether in key value format or or uh, the form data etc so we'll understand all of this okay and then we send it and then after sending if the response registration has been successful message appears here or in the body all the details appear here and uh, the response status is 200 okay then we know that registration has been successful right and this api testing will be basically then done in that case similarly for the login so that's what you will do with the postman client to test all of the exposed apis or web services from your application and then once your apis are basically being tested parallelly the ui is being developed those apis are being integrated on the ui and you continue testing all of that those things through the ui so you'll launch the ui and then you open the registration page you'll put all the registration details in the browser and then submit right so say for example in this case i have opened registration page okay so i'll say registration something.com right and then provide um, and then provide the user details submit and it will perform the registration on the server okay so that's the basic relevance and the details about the http the response codes and why do we need the postman client because over the browser you i mean here say for example we have got this response but it's not very well formatted you won't be getting all of the details and the testing capabilities in this client right otherwise we would have just used browser to test everything so postman app in itself provides a lot of capabilities we can write test cases we can automate things right so that's why this postman app or client is required for doing the api testing okay so bit lengthy tutorial but i think this is very important for as a starting point before you go ahead into the deep concepts of api testing and even if you're a absolute beginner you would be now be able to correlate why you need to do api testing why why postman client why not browser right and the http status codes and how all that communication happened so that's all for this tutorial i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching